What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, our 2022 summer vacation has officially started. We got Jake with his brand new fly rod. We got Luke in the background eating an apple. And we even have Redneck up there on the beach exploring. Redneck, you find anything cool? For those of y'all that don't know, Rednecks are seven-year-old Jack Russell. Him and Luke are actually the same exact age. They're, I think, three weeks apart. What is this? It's like a planter. What is what? Like this. Um, I think that's a horse conch. It's like a, it's their egg sacs. You can take it home and eat it for salad if you want. It's not it's salad. Redneck, what's up? Jake, I would recommend walking out there just to where it gets like shin deep and start casting. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering what in the heck is Gabe doing in the Keys yet he had a California sheep's head in the thumbnail. Well, trust me, we're going back to California in just a minute. This video is all about our recent trip to California that Kelly and I took to San Diego. Our good friend CJ set it up and we were on the boat called Mad Max. It's a 39 contender. If you watched my last video, which was spear fishing for bluefin tuna, we actually gave a random stranger the world's most expensive fish, and that is a big bluefin tuna. Luke, you think we should show him the footage of shooting that huge California sheep's head? You're not very talkative today. I felt like this clamshell. What is Redneck doing out there? <laughs> Redneck is too deep, you're too small. You guys, this is so funny. He's so small that it only takes about eight inches of water to make him swim. Redneck, you can't go out there, it's too deep. Well, Redneck is a good swimmer. Oh, if you hook a fish, he'll definitely be out there. What you got? It's a conch. Here, turn to the, to the sun so we can see it. That's a baby horse conch. That's so neat. What you got? <laughs> it's goofy. Oh. Another hermit. That's a big one. Uh oh, here comes Redneck. It's deep out here, Redneck. Wait, there's a, there's a baby one right here. See his claws? Yeah. Son, what you doing out here? You better get back to shore. You catch anything, Jake? Not yet. I'm hoping to. It's beautiful here, isn't it? I think we need to get going, though, because low tide's coming. Yeah. We will be stuck here for the rest of the day. <laughs> if you see Redneck, he's trying to swim to shore, but the current's so hard it's actually dragging him. So he's swimming sort of crab clawing. What is this? Ew, yuck. I don't know what that is. I don't know if you can see really clearly, but right over there is our bay boat. And it's parked in a little bit of a channel that leads right out here into the Gulf of Mexico. And all those little dots that you see out there are boats getting ready for mini lobster season. There's tons of coral heads out there and all kinds of cool stuff that lobster hide in. And we're definitely going to make some lobster videos while we're here. But today, this video is all about spearfishing off the islands of Coronado, which are located right off the coast of Mexico in San Diego, California. I think it was like 18 miles offshore. We spent the first and the second day of our trip out there spearing bluefins and hunting bluefins. The third day, we wanted to go to the islands, get in and do something that we have never seen before. And let me tell you something, it was amazing. One thing I want to tell you that I didn't tell you anything about in the tuna video was all the sea lions. <laughs> they are everywhere. They're on all the buoys and all the docks. And a sea lion is a hunter. They chase and hunt down fish. And when we were spearfishing at the Coronado Islands, a couple of them gave me an absolute heart attack. So while Jake's out here casting with the fly rod trying to get a grip because he's never done it before, he just got it a week ago, let's take it back to California. We're getting in the water, my GoPro's on my head, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I saw it. You're literally riding shotgun right on my forehead. So one thing I want you guys to pay attention to is all that white water going up and how it comes back down. It doesn't look like much at all. See it coming back down there like a waterfall? Now watch it go back up. See how far it goes up? Now it's gonna come back down. That's what's called surge. Well, you gotta realize when you're in the water spearfishing, all the water is moving. 
it's going up and coming back so you're in the water and you're doing it you're going up and back with it and it makes for the weirdest feeling ever You got me in my oh, Dave's covering you. <laughs> oh, woo! Can you hold him so I can go to my gun? Yeah. Alright. Who used calico to fuck your sheep's head right here? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah. High, wow, te high dude, teens. That's beautiful. That's an, old, that's an old one. Good job, Gabe. Well done, dude. Nice Talk shot. Talk to me. What was the story? I went down and I was coming up and he come out of the ledge shooting away from me. But he had to go around a big rock before he could get out of range. That Marauder right there, stupid accurate. It's on a whole nother league, swimming in that surge and... Pretty cool, huh? What can I say? We got a giant. Yeah, buddy. Come on, dude. That tip was not... Look at, look at Gabe and these, these teeth. He just doesn't care at all. The problem is, is I got gloves on and I can't feel. There we go. I think I got it. Just when you think you have it. This fish is still fully alive. Look at the eye moving. chunkiness right there that's what we came here for this and bluefin tuna and captain mad max and austin and cj these dudes right here literally zero complaints i don't have a complaint about this trip other than i lost my big tuna but that was all on me look at this he needs to go to the dentist Beautiful fish. I wish the camera could feel this. Just like a, a, I don't know, how do you describe that? It's like a it's, a, it's a gelatinous ball. It's like, how would you describe that? These are good eating? These are amazing. We make yeah. fish cakes out of these, you'll swear it was crab. Let's put him on ice. Oh wait, where's my, where's my bass at? Oh, he's right, right here. Get your bass out, yeah. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about I knocked another species off. Drop that big bulge. No, it's, we just did. He's like, what does it feel like? I'm like, I don't know. I like drop that bulge. And let's get, uh, let's get your thumbnail before, yeah. before the color changes. Hold on, let's show this camera. This largemouth bass, we caught him slipping out here in the ocean. He probably got out of somebody's fish tank and he's been just multiplying out here. <laughs> That's actually a calico sea bass. Pretty dope. All right, we're gonna get a thumbnail. We'll be right back. went to shoot a giant sheep said there was two of them from me to you away and somebody in the boat put my gut on safety oh. they're here the kingfish yeah the big one yeah they're okay. here okay Okay. 
So how many times in life will you see a bluefin tuna, a Pacific barracuda, white sea bass, triggerfish, calico sea bass, all in the same pile? So I'm definitely mounting this fish as the fish of a lifetime. Y'all, this is CJ. You've seen him a ton of times. Up, guys? He's who set this whole entire trip up. I'm going to put his Instagram right here. He does guided trips like this all over the world. And you know I do everything on my own for the most part. But on a trip like this, you want to come with somebody who has the right captains, the right crew, and can put you on the fish of your dreams. So I've already got a bluefin tuna, this sheep's head. I got my biggest calico bass ever, my first ever calico bass. One other thing, what else did I get? Uh, yellow yellow tail. Tail? Oh, yellow, yellow tail, yellow my tail first yesterday. speared yellow tail. Pretty much got everything California has to offer except for a white sea bass. Trust me, these guys, it's top notch. Need I say more? We're gonna see him in Mag Bay. We're actually gonna go on a trip with him in a couple months. Back to Mag Bay spearfishing. It's gonna be fun. Go ahead. Let's see it. So, one inch all the way down here to 31 inches. Wow. So when you want to mount a fish like this, you still get to eat it. You still get to enjoy it. We're doing replica mounts. We're going to take some of this to a restaurant tonight. And then tomorrow, Austin, back at the lodge, is going to cook us up a new thing that I've never done on my channel. Sheephead fish cakes. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. Much, much needed from a local. Let's do a girth. Let's see. What do we got? Make sure you get a length with the uh, little tendrils on the fins, too. He is... 26 inches around. Wow. Look at that. Oh, wait, no, no, sorry. Sorry, 25 inches around. Yes. Yeah, 25 inches around. Yep. And then here, look, see how long these are. About six inches. Those are like his brow tines. <laughs> That's wild. So, what was he? 25 inches around and 31 inches long. The giant. Wait, hold on, because I did, I did it from fork length. Oh, yeah, 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 It'll be yeah. total length. The top one's longer. <laughs> well, we'll just do it right here down the middle. Yeah. 32. 32 and a half. What a beautiful fish. How much do you think it weighs? I'm going to say 23. 20 Any other guesses? Are you making guesses? I haven't lifted it up. One but... more thing. One more thing. So, he shot one today. He's been after this fish forever, and it bounced off. He was so <laughs> mad at the spear gun. Well, Austin said another guy was out here last week and had one of these big tuna guns bounce off one. Check this out. Now, let me show you just how lucky I am. This is where I hit him, right here. I put <laughs> it right there. Look at the sound difference, dude. Listen, that sound now, difference. when I lined up, like I'm like a sniper, like the American sniper dude. <laughs> I'm like, Austin said, no right here, yes right here. So I'll just put it right in the middle. <laughs> Actually, that was just pure luck. I didn't. Even, he tells me this after we shoot one. Huge shout out to Chris. Where's Chris? Huge shout out. He called me over and said there's big sheep. Said, did you know this big one was there? Yeah, there was two of them. He said he saw the other one. So then I went and tagged the second one. Okay. I actually filmed another one this big, but Austin didn't want me to get another one. So he put my gun on safety. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose for sure <laughs> we'll see y'all back at the hill we're hungry cold and ready to eat this is one of the few fish in my life 
I literally just want to take home with me. I don't want to clean it. Like, I'm not even lying. It's like, can I just take it home with me like this and go it's show so pretty. all my buddies? Look how thick. Come here and look just how thick. That's probably <laughs> five, inch, five inches thick. But we need to weigh it because I'm mounting it. We've already got a girth and a length. Let's weigh it and we're going to guess. I'm going to guess 23.4. Do fish lose weight or gain weight after being lose. on ice? 20. So before we weigh it, I will say that this dude's a pro at shooting giants. And at one time you had a record, didn't you? I did, yeah. When I was 16, I had a... Can we show that picture right now? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You guys, this is the man of many haircuts. <laughs> I think we should just really quick for the audience show several random pictures of you. You know what? I deserve it. At this point, I deserve it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Leave a comment below on which one of those haircuts you just saw was your favorite. <laughs> All right, let's weigh this thing. What Wait, are you guessing, Cal? I gotta hold it. I gotta hold it. That's cheating. You guys held it. I haven't even picked up this fish yet. Mm. 20.9. I said 20. Are you in points? 21. 21. So it's got to be under 21 for you to win and over 21 for you to win. Got it. And Thank I'm saying guys. 22. 22. 22.4. There we go. Dang and it. the champion is me. <laughs> got to give it to him. This head, like the most beautiful fish I think I've ever seen. Ugly and beautiful all at the same time. So look at these teeth. So these things feed mostly on sea urchins. And you can see this one's actually broke off one of his teeth feeding on something a little bit too tough for these crazy canine teeth. Look at that. That is huge. We're not crazy. like to, the jaw muscles in these are insane. To be able to crack through the shells of these mollusks they eat, I would not like to be on the receiving end of this, that's for sure. Now Joe VT said he caught them on live sardines down a little bit south in Mexico. Live sardines on a snapper rig. If you catch one of these rod and reel, it's a fish of a lifetime. Let alone spearfishing is amazing catch by far, but they're very smart when they get to be this big. So I just took the guts out of it because we wanted to see what was in its belly. This, this particular fish eats a lot of like shells and sea urchins. Kelly, feel that. Listen, that's solid shell. Feel it, Gail. That's a big chunk of some kind of shell. Yep. Like how do they eat that? I just want to know the nutritional value of an urchin. Look, look, I mean, that's insane. And they can digest it too. Yeah. So of course, Austin's full of surprises. What do you got? So this is what the teeth actually look like. This is a jaw off of a 26 pounder, a little bit bigger than this. And you can see just, it's just solid bone backed up by these incredible muscles. I mean, this head is pure bone, crazy cheek muscles. Just the crushing power involved in these is phenomenal. So for those of y'all that watched my videos recent in North Carolina, the big lobster and huge hogfish, Jason actually skull mounts fish. So he'll disassemble this head into a million puzzle pieces and then take super glue and put them all back together and that's how he made my big black grouper skull so we're gonna take this head off freeze it and bring it back to florida with us on the airplane and let jason mount it that's gonna be so cool now do you think i need to cut into this or no is, is that just gelatinous that's just gelatinous and fortunately there's nothing really up here other than just fish goo huh yeah i didn't cut into it like i thought i thought it would just go right in this fish is hard. So he said he likes to trace them around just like we would do a mutton or any other thick fish. Their scales are thick like a redfish. I was gonna say redfish. Big old tail to poke through. Look at those scales. So Austin, I cut myself real bad in the Bahamas. And I have PTSD of doing what? Playing? Yeah. Like really, really, really bad. Just we were in a hurry. We were trying to go deep dropping. I've cleaned a million fish and that day it got me. So I wear a glove and I don't have it. And I'm like, oh, 
I have a glove for you if you're, but I think you're feeling brave right now. I'm feeling. And right here, so on that trigger fish in the Bahamas, I got to right here and tried to pop that pin bone and went, look at that scar. Oh my God. Laid myself open. We don't want to do that here. I think I'd rather go to the hospital in the Bahamas than California. <laughs> Look at that meat. It looks a lot like grouper. I can see that man. Anytime you're cleaning something that you never cleaned before, just take your time and do it like you would another fish. And let it work through the process. These are tricky and you're doing a really good job. I just sort of let the flay do its job. It's heavy, it'll fold over. Look at that. One big old massive. That fly is thick. Yeah, it is. You definitely have to butterfly it. Man. When they get to be big like this, though, the consistency is going to be amazing. These fish cakes we're about to make. Mmm. Mmm. Just wait. I'm not so, even going to. I'm not even going to sell them up. You're going to see. <laughs> he looks a whole lot different now. He looks like he's ready for the grill, the fryer, the smoker, and the freezer, and then ultimately up on my wall. To me, it's all about utilizing as much of the fish as you can. We're gonna go out back and let him do his work. He's gonna take over this video from here and make fish cakes. I've never had them. You're up for a treat. It's I heard good. something about a blender. We'll see. It's all in his court here. But did you expect it to look like that? So what my new chef buddy did is he took this sheep's head, cut it up in chunks, put it in a blender, which is something I totally did not expect. Then he added chopped onions, two or three, three eggs, I think, some panko breadcrumbs, stirred it all up with his hands, and made these cool little fish patties. And now we're gonna lay them into some grease. They actually smell and look a lot better and different than I was expecting. I was totally not expecting to see a fish like that go into a blender. But I do know how to cook with panko, and I know if you have this grease too hot, the panko will brown really quickly, way before the fish is done. So you want to cook it on like a medium heat. So if you want to check out this full catch, clean, and cook, but him doing it from start to finish, his channel is called Austin Dairy, and I'll put it right here. He has a YouTube video up with California Sheep's Head where he does the whole process. I gave you the fast forward version. On his channel, he'll show you exactly how to do it in full detail. And these things look absolutely amazing. And if you can't tell, I am super tired. We've been diving in freezing cold waters. It's not that bad. It is. It's not I'm that from bad. Florida. These it's guys. Are, the summer for us. These guys are snowbirds up here. They can take this freezing cold water. Even though I must say, yesterday Kelly and I were the last ones to get in the boat. You were. You guys. You guys stuck it out. You know, coming coming from warm waters. I mean, you guys did it right. Like, yeah, I was impressed, to be honest. A little bit too much complaining about how cold it is, considering this is the middle of the summer for us. I didn't do much complaining <laughs> on the boat, though. I didn't. I <laughs> might have complained afterwards. But I think right now is the moment. I'm going to show you guys my favorite clip, one of my favorite clips of the trip. I'm on the bottom looking for a fish under this ledge. And I hear somebody talking to me, but you're underwater, so nobody should be talking to you. Check this out. Can y'all smell it? What is this sauce that you just put on the top? A little bit of a secret, but the recipe is on my YouTube channel. Uh-oh, he's calling his YouTube channel out. Y'all check it out. Austin Dairy. I will be back to learn with him, CJ, Mad Max, 
Like Max doesn't get enough credit in any of these videos. He really doesn't. He is such a humble guy and he, he hangs out in the tower just driving around putting everybody on fish all day. His life consists of sitting up in that lonely tower by himself, putting people on fish of their life, like dreams. You know, for someone that doesn't spearfish, he is the best guy putting on tuna. Oh man. Saw some steam coming out of your mouth. They're probably hot. That's I'm like, freaking incredible. I'm liking the green onion on top. It's a nice touch. That is incredible. Literally the easiest thing ever. Some eggs, some panko, some fish. He seasoned it afterwards just because we forgot a step. We've been dealing with an Airbnb. We've had serious issues all day with that. On top of trying to film this and the tuna video, Kelly's got something on her shoulder though and I want her to come over here and try this. So I'm gonna take the camera and show y'all what's on her shoulder and her face. Cause these things, oh my God. Are this oh cheese? God. What's, what's on the sauce? I don't know, but it's got, it's got what did you do now? It looks like chia seeds for some reason. Oh, this looks hot. What in the world? Austin just gave, no. He's Where's not going anywhere. He's, He's probably trying to get some of those headlights. Um, I don't want him to fall. What's up, dude? Luke, with my eight-year-old right now. Is he seven or eight? He's seven. Seven. My seven-year-old older than him. Would love that. This lizard's older than him. Mm -hmm. Luke, that lizard is older than you. Go sit down, babe. And let's tell us your honest opinion. He'll climb out if you sit down. <laughs> They're really good. The sauce is a nice touch. Man, I'm I can... I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> He's posted. I, you know what? I think you're just gonna have to live with it now. He's on me? Mm -hmm. He's good? He's a part of you now. He totally feels like he's gonna fall off. Mm -hmm. He's good. This is so good. It's kind of like... It literally just tastes like, like a nice, I don't even know how to say this, like it's fish fried in panko and it's so good and the sauce is delicious. I didn't even see you make the sauce. I, I kept that behind you guys back. I don't want to show you. I, I can give all my secrets away the first time. Mm, I'm good. And we haven't ate like all day, so we're going to clean this plate. 